Hi, I'm here with Chris Law to learn more about how to protect highly sensitive data from being exfiltrated. Hi, Yifeng. Happy to be here. So I've seen a lot of headlines over the last year about big data breaches, and they seem to be getting bigger and bigger. What's going on? Yes, any company storing sensitive data needs to be ready to protect against data breaches. And so when you say highly sensitive data, what do you mean exactly? Highly sensitive data can be things like social security numbers, credit card numbers, or patient data. This includes things like PII, that's personally identifiable information, financial information, or PHI, and that's protected health information. But highly sensitive data could really be any data that your company deems to be sensitive. But the good news is Google Cloud can help protect this data. I'll show you how. So let's say you're building your finance app and your partner is sending you a bunch of data. The partner is sending you both sensitive data in red here and non-sensitive data in green. Got it. So I really want to keep that red golf ball secure. Exactly. Now, the easiest way to get this data from the partner is to create a public bucket in Google Cloud and give them access to it. So now, as you can see, the partner is sending the sensitive data and non-sensitive data all into this one bucket. But there's a problem with that setup, and it's that unauthorized parties can get access to these public buckets and can exfiltrate the data. And any exposure of, say, social security numbers or credit card information can put you and your company in the headlines. But the good news is, developers like yourself can use Google Cloud's Identity and Access Management System, or IAM, to restrict access to the bucket that stores this sensitive data. So, how does IAM work? With IAM, as a developer, you can control exactly which users have access to the new restricted bucket, and each user will have to securely authenticate in order to get any access to the data. Right, so as a developer, I can just lock this bucket down so only a few people can access it. Exactly. Anyone trying to get access to data in your restricted bucket needs to be authorized before they can get access to any sensitive data. So I have this new restricted bucket with limited access. How do I get the social security number data into that bucket? Great question. Well, let's take a look at how you can do it. One way you can sort this social security number data into this restricted bucket is to do it manually. The problem with this approach is that I might make a mistake and categorize the data wrong. So in this example, I might accidentally miscategorize the social security number data and put it into the public bucket, exposing it to the wrong people. Got it. For highly sensitive data like this, it makes sense to automate this sensitive data classification process as much as possible. And that's what developers use Google Cloud's Data Loss Prevention, or DLP, API for. DLP can identify over 90 plus different types of common sensitive data types like social security numbers and credit card numbers. So with DLP enabled, now when the partner sends you data, DLP will automatically identify the social security numbers and automatically put that data into the restricted bucket. Amazing. Pretty cool. Yeah. So now that we've automated this process, we've got the sensitive data all going into the restricted bucket and only a few select users have access to it. Great. So can I launch my app now? Not just yet. This setup works fine as long as the partner sends the data into the right API. But let's say they accidentally email through a bunch of sensitive social security number data. So over here, we have a bunch of emails, white golf balls, and emails with sensitive data, which are red golf balls. Anyone who receives this email can download the social security number data to their machine or forward it to a personal drive. And this makes it much more likely to be exposed. So how can we keep this social security number data out of inboxes? To handle this problem, you can use Google Cloud's data loss prevention technology in G Suite. So with G Suite DLP set up, the social security number data within the emails gets automatically detected and moved into a quarantine bucket. And so now that social security data doesn't hit my inbox. Exactly. And once the data is moved into the quarantine bucket, admins can review and handle it more securely. So we've got the social security number data going securely into this restricted bucket. And now only a few select users can access it. But what's to stop one of these legitimate users from just stealing the data? Right, great questions. Insider attacks are also a threat. So even if you're putting the data in a secure environment, a user who is granted access to that data may have malicious intent and might try to exfiltrate the data. Leaks like this can be contained and controlled using Google Cloud's VPC service controls. With VPC service controls, we can set up a secure access zone that acts as a perimeter around the sensitive data, so even insiders can't move the data out. 
So even a user I granted legitimate access to would not be able to exfiltrate that data. That's right. What if an admin goes in and just changes these settings? With Google Cloud's Forseti open source security tools, you can set up an alert. So when an admin makes any changes to sensitive data settings, an alert can be sent to Cloud Security Command Center so that even admin access can be monitored. Wow. So are we ready to launch the app now? Well, let's take a look at your finance app. The partner is sending you social security number data, and it's all being categorized in the right bucket. There's a secure access zone around the data, and even if the partner sends social security number data via email, that data is automatically quarantined. I think you're ready to launch your app. Great. Well, Chris, thanks for showing me how developers and companies can protect highly sensitive data like this with Google Cloud. My pleasure.